In this problem, we need to determine in which quadrant will theta lie if the cosecant of theta is greater than zero and the cosine of theta is less than zero. So remember, we know that the cosecant of theta, you should all remember that is one over the sine of theta, and we're given that that is greater than zero. In other words, we're told it is positive. Well, in which quadrants is the cosecant and the sine of theta both positive? Well, hopefully you remember your mnemonic, all students take calculus. And remember, the A in quadrant 1 means all trig functions are positive in quadrant 1. The S in quadrant 2 means the sine of theta and the cosecant of theta, those are both positive, everybody else is negative. In quadrant 3, T stands for the tangent of theta is positive, as is its reciprocal, the cotangent of theta. They're both positive. Everybody else is negative. The C in quadrant 4 stands for the cosine of theta, and its reciprocal, the secant of theta, are both positive. Everybody else is negative in quadrant 4. So let's use this information to, de to determine when this is true here. So when are the cosecant of theta and the sine of theta positive? Well, looking over here, everybody's positive in quadrant one, so therefore this is definitely true in quadrant one. And also the sine and the cosecant are positive in quadrant two here. So the, this is true in quadrant one and quadrant two. So now let's look at the second part of our problem in which we're told that the cosine of theta is less than zero. That means it is negative. Well, when is the cosine negative? We know where the cosine is positive. It's positive in quadrant one, and it's also positive in quadrant four. Therefore, it is negative in quadrant two and quadrant three. So the second part is true in quadrant two, and quadrant three. So all we have to do now is decide when is this statement true and this statement true. So what do these two things have in common? The first statement is true in quadrant one and two and the second one is in quadrant two and quadrant three and what do they have in common? They are both true in quadrant two. Therefore, we know that our angle theta must lie in quadrant two because that is the only quadrant in which both statements given up here are true.